What's going on, fellas? Doing a little test for Juan today. I've got a pipette here with a 50-50 solution of food coloring and water. So I'm going to administer four cc's of this solution, which should represent the equivalent of exactly two cc's of food coloring. And we are then going to time this thing to see how long it takes to turn this water clear again by bubbling ozone through it with just the simple setup we have with no stir bar, no air stone or nothing like that. So yes, the apparatus is inefficient, but we are comparing this to a previous test and an ozone generator that I've already built and have already mailed to Warren. In the last test, it took just over three and a half hours to turn that jar of water just pink. It wouldn't even go all the way clear. So we're going to see how much better this ozone generator does than the last one. This right here is a small mock-up of the dual electrode gap ozone generator that we're using. This thing has two electrode gaps going on simultaneously with air passing between both. Air will be passing inside of that quartz tubing as well as on the outside in the secondary larger air gap area. We're going to be pumping pure oxygen through this thing and the oxygen coming off of it is so powerful that it will burn your eyes, burn your nose, and it will make you cough. So pretty dangerous stuff. The mucous membrane provides protection for a couple of seconds, but after that, that's it. You are in severe danger, so be careful with this stuff. I will double check the specifications of this oxygen concentrator, but I'm pretty sure that's where we're at. It's right around 95% pure at 2 liters per minute, and it goes all the way down to 35% oxygen at 9 liters per minute, but we're not interested in that. We want as pure as we can get. Okay, so now that we've got the cell somewhat calibrated in, smelling really bad, just kind of get a before and after. We are restarting the test. There is two cc's of food coloring in that mixture. Okay, Juan, so here's the test beaker from the last test, from the last ozone generator that I built you, and it took us three and a half hours to turn two cc's into pink water. So even after three and a half hours, we were still not able to turn that water clear, though we did indeed change the, the, the shade significantly. So we got to beat that. If we can do better than that in three and a half hours, we know we're making some serious progress. One half hour mark. No notable change that I can see. Okay, we're about an hour in. I lost track of the clock. It's about an hour and 10 minutes does seem to have lightened up some 75 degrees the input temperature was 74.8 this is the flow for both electrodes not very much so if 90 percent of this is basically heat loss we're really only running at about 95 watts of heat into the water so that's one way you guys can calculate that when you go to cool this thing down. 90% is going to be lost as heat. Little resistor's getting hot on that capacitor. What the hell is that all about? I might cut that off of there. You know what? I know it's a safety feature, but it sure seems like it's bleeding off a lot of current. What do you guys think? This is about two and a half hours in. So this isn't gonna read the temperature very well on this stainless steel container. That bright color you see is just my reflection in the stainless steel. See me moving my hand? It's getting a little warm. Maybe I'll fire that fan up. Alright fellas, we're two hours in. 
and I could tell right now by looking at it that we're probably gonna beat the three and a half hour mark on the pink solution we ended up with last time with the smaller ozone generator. Now obviously there are ways to increase the reaction time or residence time of the bubbles. We could add a stir rod, a magnetic stirrer. You could have an air stone in there or you could change the height of the reaction chamber. All right, so we're two and a half hours in and we have drastic color change. And that was a significant amount of food coloring. Another thing that I'm learning in these tests is that it's better to have a low flow pure oxygen rather than a high flow, like rather than running that machine on nine liters per minute at 35% oxygen, it's better to run it at two liters per minute at 95% oxygen. That extra flow isn't helping anything at all. It's the oxygen purity that you want. So, this is drastic. Okay, so we are three hours in, and I'm astonished. Could you imagine how well this would have went if we had a magnetic stir bar in there, increasing the residence time of those bubbles? Or even an air stone? And some of the people who are giving me heck about the ozone exposure, um, based on the research that I've done, if you only get exposed to it for a brief moment and then you get out of there, they say your mucous membrane will protect you. And that the smell you're actually smelling is the reaction of ozone with the mucus and um, the things in your throat and in your lungs. That's why the smell tends to linger, because you're actually smelling the effects of ozone on your body and not the ozone itself. That's what I've read anyway. And, and that would make sense because people have described the experience where certain ozone electrodes will create different smelling gas. And that makes sense. If you're smelling a very um, intense concentrated gas, it's gonna burn and have a sharper smell. Whereas a softer smell is what they say comes off of those uh, porcelain electrodes. That would be a lower concentration of ozone where it's only maybe just slightly reacting with your mucous membrane. For, for people who don't know what a mucous membrane is, that's just simply the mucus, the saliva that covers your throat and lungs, that, that barrier. That's an actual membrane is what it's called. So I'm shutting this thing down. Uh, we've got a good look at it. Let's take a look at this copper real quick. The reason why I used copper for the discharge was to see if we got any corrosion and look at that. So that is indication of some extremely concentrated ozone. Three hours of exposure did that. So we definitely got proof of some extremely powerful ozone production here. That's a wrap. You're done, son. All right, quick recap. This is a start point. This is a half hour in. No real noticeable color change. About this point, I changed the ozone setting, so we got a little bit more powerful. Here we are at two and a half hour, or two hours. There's two and a half hours, and then we're coming up on three hours here. You can see the three hours, it's completely cleared up. And because I adjusted the machine halfway through the test, we are actually putting out more ozone than we thought, and this could have happened a lot quicker than it did.